Hello, people. This is Cigarette Man again. To all the viewers out there that may have been viewing some of my talks and things, including that, that, young, that young man named Mr. Anonymous who's out there, I hope you will uh, find this interview as entertaining or as challenging as the, as the others. Today I'm going to talk about the world changing into something that we have never dreamed of with the future holds. We won't talk about all the things like Corona that have attacked our world, but we will talk about the way it had affect people, the, the school system, the jobs, the government, the uh, sports world, for instance. Most sports now, they, they, they wear masks and sports. The schools are not getting the education that they would get back in the day. We have to have a lot more tutors. The, uh, the voting system is going through through uh, mails and, and phone calls and stuff because you can't walk into businesses no more. And no one, everyone is scared to come in contact with each other because they feel what might be danger to them. But what we must realize, people, is that life is not guaranteed to anybody from day to day. So if you ever heard of that Nita Baker song, ain't no need of worrying what tomorrow's going to bring because it'll be all over in the morning. That meant, that song meant that it wasn't no need to worry because we don't know if we're going to be here from one day to the next. So when you teach your children how to get along in the world, you have to teach them to be educated of the world, but not to fear everything and not go on with their life. That be so caught up where they, where they feel everything is going to be, because no one is guaranteed everything in the world. So we have to survive with what we got. And the changing of the world, like this guy I met right here, he came down here and don't wear a mask or anything. And we, and we come out here and we deal with each other every day. And life goes on for us. The thing about the world today is, is that everybody's so stressed out and complicated and making things so complicated about what they will have and what they don't have. And we got to remember what life is all about. Life wasn't meant to be about things. It was meant to be about enjoyment in life. And we keep making it complicated by putting so much work and so much time in the things we don't have and the things we do have. Well, let me ask you this out there to the public. If you got in your car today and you saved all that money in your bank account tomorrow, what if you got in a car wreck today and you died today? Then all that would be obsolete because we both know in past histories that kids have killed their parents for money. We talking about M uh, uh, Menendez, OJ, didn't want to get Nicole Simpson all that money. Now he's in prison or wherever he's at and have nothing. Now the Menendez brothers, with all, they, all that money they wanted from their parents, they're in prison and they don't have nothing. So my point is this, when you make all that money and when you do all that stuff and forget about human life, your own children, you ever walk through the kitchen and see your son staring at you for some reason or your daughter staring at you? And you wonder what they're staring at you, ask them, you say, well, what are you staring at? I was all nothing, I was thinking about something. Do you ever think in your mind that your daughter was sitting there wondering, damn, dad left me 20 million, but he's so happy. Mom left me 30 million in the will, but she's so healthy. And when, so they get in the hand, they want them, they want them Ferraris and them Lamborghinis now. We all want things. And then we get to the drug world. Drugs have destroyed our world. Not that it's wrong to do them, because don't get me wrong, I dibble and dab, and I don't do the hard stuff. But I have dibble and dabbed in drugs too. But we make it so important to women, and your kids are coming down in Skid Row to sell their bodies for crystal, for crack, and to party. Is this the life that you really want? To give somebody that kind of power and control over your life? Now again, we won't go, remember again, I said this once before in the last interview. Love is truly all the things you hate. And the reason I'm bringing that up today, because a friend of mine asked me, he, he told me how I worded that. He couldn't remember how I worded that. Remember, if I loved everything in the world, it would be easy for me to get along with that. But what would be hard for me to get along with is if I look across at my buddy and say, you's a nasty son of a bee and then walked out there and saved his life and let him live, keep him from dying. That would be love. That would be love because you have concern for life. 
The animals out there teach us more than the humans teach us. You take the dog, for instance. The dog is loyal. He'll sit there all day, lay and sleep. But as soon as you come nowhere, anywhere near his property, his owner, he's on his feet. And he's alert to everything that goes on around him. So my point is, if we gonna go on and continue in this world, remember education got to continue. Jobs have to continue. And life has to continue, and it'll be, gone, it'll be here long after you live. Now, when I walk the streets every night and every day, I'm homeless myself, and when I walk the streets every day and every night, I see things. I see people hating each other, people getting up, uh, wanting, wanting to commit suicide because they feel like the world. You know. Now, we talked about this guy, Donald Trump, like he was a son of a bitch. But do you remember when all the stimulus checks came out and people was getting that money, we love Donald Trump now, but when he first got in office, how oh, could you? Know? But remember why they put Donald Trump there. They didn't put him there for ethics. They didn't put him there for, your, for nobleness. They put him there because the world was in such a deficit and they needed somebody to know how to make money. Donald Trump showed us how he, that he know how to do that. So as much as you think this man is a son of a bitch, this man gave a lot of people money. Ask the GR people with all them new food stamps. Ask the people that's getting all them stimulus checks. Ask the unemployment people that's getting them big unemployment checks because they haven't had no employment. So when we say who was the world, who was the best leaders of the world, we go back and think John F. Kennedy, Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther King, uh, Malcolm X, Robert F. Kennedy, President Lyndon Johnson. But what have all those guys did? Those guys kept us in deficits. And even though they tried to be help us and be noble, the world kept us paying a lot of money out to other countries for wars and stuff. Donald Trump will go down in history as being one of the guys that made the world a lot of money and helped a lot of people out. Even though he's a son of a bitch, the government had to, had to agree to that. And Congress had to vote on that, and Donald Trump had to sign that bill. So. My point is this, what, is you, what do you really want out of life? That's what most people have to sit down and decide. What is it that truly makes me happy? Is it the BMW? Is it the stress of paying bills everywhere? Is it, is, is, it, is it the stress of your daughter sneaking out of school, sneaking to a boyfriend home and having sex? Is it the son that you can't get, that, that, that's still in the, they're leaving Beverly Hills or Bel Air because he don't want to run the company like daddy running, he wanted to find, have fun, so he go down the schedule and spend seven or eight hundred dollars. Pull out five thousand dollars. Then you find his head knocked off in a ditch somewhere because the people he thought he could trust decide they want more money. So my point is this, people. What do you really want out of life? And what does it take to make you truly happy? Because if you rely on things, are you going to be happy when you have to send all those bills in? Are you going to be happy when you have nobody around you but the people that like you for money and tell you lies that they love you and they're really looking at you in the back of your head like they wish you were dead so they can get to your money? Do, who do you trust in the world 100%? Because not to be in religion, but when we, in the beginning of this thing, it said we should appreciate life for life, not life for things, because the things and the goals you set, we would like to reach these goals, but what if you don't reach these goals? Will that put you into a deficit to where you want to commit suicide? To where you feel you was a failure in life because you didn't get the things you want? Because you didn't have a nice big pretty car? Because you felt like you let mom down or your brothers and your sisters down? Because you living up to society expectations? Again, I said this here be one once before. We live up to everybody else's expectations but our own. We up trying to do what everybody else thinks. Well, I think that would be good for you to go to this school. You know? well, I think this would be good for you to do this with your life. Is that what you want to do, though? Because when kids grow up, they decide that I don't like, I, my, look, my outlook is, is not the same as your outlook on life, whether you're older or younger. So you have to ask yourself, where is your life going? And is, is it going the way you want it to go? Because once you get older, you'll look in the mirror and say, well, who am I? What is it that I really want to do? 
What is it that, that made me happy? Was it the girl? Was it the car, the drugs? Or was I happy just to be here another day? Because I tell you what makes me happy. What makes me happy is to see this guy smiling with this doing the interview again for me. What makes me happy is to see the young lady outside that's still here and, uh, and not going through no headaches. That's what makes me happy. Now, if I get a little something extra along the way of loving these people uh, and respecting these people, see, because beauty starts from the inside out. It don't come from the outside in. If you don't feel beautiful from within your heart, if you don't feel like you have a purpose in life without all that, and that your purpose for being here is to be happy, is to enjoy life, is to make other people happy. Wouldn't you like people smile? Now, I'm one to talk about that. Most of my friends would say I'm a son of a bitch. They would say I'm the most nastiest man out there. Not because I'm mean, because I'm very thorough. But basically, I try to keep a smile on my face and bring smiles to others. But when I do, got to deal with people that's not like that, I deal with them with a very thorough hand. So the ones that have met me think I'm a son of a bitch out there. Don't think I'm a son of a bitch. Think he's a very thorough man who will not be easily misled. Because if you think way back when, when you first started, this, when you took your first drink, did you do that on your own? Or did somebody come up and say, let's have a drink? And you say, I ain't never did that. Well, try this. You'll like it. Bacardi, rum. And you think about the first time you hit that crack pipe. This person, whoever did that, called you a friend, called themselves your friend. Did you hit it on your own? Or did somebody introduce that to you? Because they introduced that to you, you got to remember, this person walked up and handed you a drug like it was a joint of marijuana and gave you one of the most dangerous drugs in the world that would fuck your life up for 40, 50 years. Same thing with Crystal. And nine times out of 10, that person introduced that to you. You probably still look around and call him or her friends, like the dealers. Excuse me for talking about this, I know I'm not trying to get away from the subject, but you take the drug dealer for a long time. The women used to, used to, used to pay everything for those drugs, but then they got smart. The beautiful woman decided, if I get this man to take a hit, then he'll be in my category. I get all the drugs free. They threw it in his face. Now the drug dealer becomes the drug user. Now he got two things. He got to make his money, support his drug habit, which that crack pipe and that crystal is, is something very dangerous because you'll never get off of that. And then he wants to have the drink. Then he wants to have the girl. You know how much money that costs to have that kind of a party? Back in the day, we used to have house parties and clubs and everything was open. But now, even the club system and people are getting bored. So now they're finding bushes, abandoned buildings to get high and have sex. And it's not about disease or about corona. It's about the way you carry yourself. Have you, do you ever ask any of these people, do you show me a test? See, because now an AIDS test is like a license for sex. See, a tuberculosis and a hepatitis A, B, or C test is like a driver's license for sex. See, corona is like a driver's license for sex. That's what I'm telling you. Whatever going in your body, you are putting it there by saying yes to everything you see. Oh, yeah, we can party. Oh, yeah, I want a bite of that. Oh, yeah, I want a drink of that. Oh, yes, I can do this. Where is your life going? Now, you take a guy like me and this guy here. He might have family, but I've never seen him with any family. I might have family, but I don't have any family. And you can think that, but I don't. So it's up to us to take care of ourselves. Can you take care of yourself with all the shit that's going around in the world? Will you be able to make the right decision when somebody asks you a question and say, let's do something? Do you slow down and think about what he just asked you? Because remember this, people, if a man don't put a woman, a male or a female don't put a gun in your head and ask you a question, then don't blame them and say, oh, it's your motherfucking fault. I guess. Because the final word comes from you, yes or no. So when we point the finger, are we really placing the blame? I went to prison six times. Never carried a weapon, never did a robbery. But the things I went to prison for were small. I was naive. And I took deals, but it was my throat to say yes. 
to the deal. So when I think the people have did my life wrong, it wasn't. It was me that didn't have the proper, that didn't think properly or get into those books fired properly to find out about the law so I could beat these things. I said I got nervous and said yes. So every, and then by the time I get older, you get older, we feel so depressed because we feel the world have let us down and we are so ashamed of the things we said and did that we never look and say, but it was all my fault because I, 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 and no matter where you come from, we all have bad stories and we started out bad. People have some bad tragedies in their life. But if you stay in that tragedy and feel sorry for yourself, you'll never move forward. Because now I can say, I can tell this man, oh, God, dog, I ain't got no brothers and sisters. I ain't got no wife and kids. My mom and dad died when I was 12. And I just couldn't get it together. And I ain't never had no family. But what does that do for me? Nothing. But keep me in the same little slump I'm in. Or I can say, you know what? My mother wasn't no slut or no whore. She wasn't supposed to go out and have sex and have babies just to give me brothers and sisters. See what I'm saying? My mother couldn't, uh, uh, she couldn't say, oh, I ain't ready to die yet when God called the home. Uh, I'm going to live a little longer to give my, so my son to have a good life. No. It's time for me to go. And you'll have to do the best you can. I've taught you everything you know. And she taught me well. So whatever life, when you come here and you tell these stories about your life, the way it went, okay you get a little compensation for it. But now when you get that compensation, what do you do with that? Do you run around the corner and buy another bag of dope and spend it all and then say I'm broke again? Or would you rather go buy, even if it's either, would you rather go buy a carton of cigarettes and say, hey, sell single cigarettes, 50 cents a piece, $10 on a pack? Or would you rather go uh, buy a license and open up a little a little, uh, you get four, five hundred dollars, turn that into a thousand dollars and get you a little booth selling hot dogs or burgers. Now, it might not be the job you want, but it will be a steady income. It might not buy you that big house you want, but it keeps some dinner in your pocket. It might not buy that car you want, but it'll keep some clothes on your ass. And that's what I'm telling you. If we quit wanting every damn thing we see on TV, the Game Boy, the Xbox, the Jordans. We see somebody else when we get envy. Everybody's life was not been the same. And I said this before in one other view, one other interview. There is no right or wrong. So, because everybody's character and personality is different. So you can't get mad if I'm saying, well, why is he doing that? That motherfucker, I hate him for living like that. But that's not your life. That's his life. He's not going to be like you. She's not going to be like you. Or well, why is that, there was some lady on the why is that slut giving a, giving a, hanging around all them men? Well, why, let's find out why you really mad at the slut. Are you mad at her because she a slut? Are you mad at her because she getting attention you don't get? And that she's very beautiful and men admire her. Because just because she smile with men in the daytime I have a lot of male friends don't mean she a slut. That don't mean she having sex with him. That means that she's just a very nice lady and might be letting him down easy and don't want to get the big head and treat him like shit. But according to you, she's a slut because you don't have the character or the personality to communicate or to be relaxed like she is and function like she do, see? But she don't get, in like, she don't get mad when she look at you across the street and say, well, look at that bitch over there. She got a big ass house and two nice cars and all that. But no one gonna have it all. You got the nice cars and the big house. She got the intention. The slut got the intention in the men and making a little money on what she wanna do. So, I, like I said, quit getting mad at everything around you and decide where is my life going? All I gotta do is pay attention to me. Because for me personally, I have so much hard time taking care of cigarette, man. I don't have time to worry about what the fuck somebody else is doing. And if you notice, anybody know me, every time I can, excuse me my language on the YouTube, but and this is, I'm just telling you the truth, I really am. I don't want to give you no false hope to say I did not know. 
So if you know those people, when they come around me, the first thing I say, look at the look in my face. And they say, sugar making olives, what? When they see that look, they know not to lie to me and come with no book. I'm going to get the fuck away from me. I don't want to hear that. I'm a man of God, and I ain't with time with that bullshit. See? So you can't get mad at what everybody else is doing. When they come up to me and tell me, oh, well, I don't like this about you, cigarette man. Well, I don't care what you don't like about me because you don't have to live my life. I got to live it. See? Because all I'm going to do is live and die on this planet. And I'm never going to have everything everybody else got and don't want everything everybody. My life wasn't meant to cut that way. But you can't get in me and say, well, God damn, uh, I want that BMW he drive. No, I don't want that. Now even put it for a drive like I want my 21 speed bicycle that I always rode. That's what I want. And so I'm just telling you, when we walk around, we bring stress in our own life. And when people say, I need pills for stress, I'm bipolar, no, you're not. No, you're not. You convince yourself that you are bipolar. You convince yourself you are stressed out because you look around and get mad at what everybody else has got. And you get mad when you think their life is going better than yours and your life could be going good too and going the direction your life was meant to go. Your life ain't meant to go like hers. So if you get strike out, oh, this motherfucking nigga think he all they got the gold chains on and all that there. The same guy that you see with all those gold chains, with all those headaches and got to go to that big company catching them pills on walls, he's taking them off. He probably look out his window at you and think, I wish I had a, I wish I could have a peaceful life like that guy right there. Nobody bothers him. Nobody. So remember, the things you don't have can keep a lot of stress out your life. And the things you do have will keep a lot of stress in your life. Because the more you got, you have five, two people in a crowd of 10 that really love you. The other eight looking at you thinking in your mind, how do we get that money? How do I get this motherfucker to give me a loan? How do I get him to pay me a co-signer for my car? How do I get in his world? How do I get some of the stocks in his company? Ain't but two out of them 10 to say I really truly love this person for that person. Everybody else got some material agenda. And remember this ladies and gentlemen, but more to the ladies, is that everybody wants something. Everybody wants something. I want to be left the fuck alone and have everybody give, give me headaches about what this and that there and stressing me out. I don't mind what I mean. What I mean by left alone, that means if good educated people need some advice or something I can help them, yes. But if I got somebody hanging around me trying to steal everything I got, I'm sitting here, I'm looking at this table, looking at him, I'm looking at the table, that pen up there, I want to take that damn pen. And as soon as he turns his back, I want to take the pen. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm talking to a lady, and but she got a little short dress on. I'm still looking her in her eyes. I'm looking down between her legs. Yes, ma'am, and we are going to take care of that, and I'm going to sign these papers, and why are you not looking at me? Why are you looking between down and looking down? Because you're looking between about what you want. And all we got to do is sit back and pay attention to everything that goes on around us. And again, I'll say this here. When you hear me speak like this, you say, this man never went to school a day in his life. How do we learn that again? No library, no phone, no computer illiterate. So you say, where did he get this knowledge to speak like that? Living in different cultures and paying attention that was going around me. My point is, you don't need, you would want society to teach you certain things, and we do need to learn certain things about society, but if you give yourself a chance, you don't need people to teach you anything. If you stay focused and pay attention around you and read the signs of stores, read signs, look at a book and then find out what that store really has to give you. Find out what this Bible, what that book you're reading really have to give you. And if you read it, and then you go out and you pay attention to every single thing and you just look and you know, you know, you're just looking, walking around, looking, but you pay attention to all things around you. Like these high-tech cameras here. I never touched one in my life. But I guarantee you, if you set one down in front of me on a stand like that and I took a look over it, it might take me a couple hours. 
but I believe I'd I believe I be able to work that thing like a National Geographic photographer if I just gave myself a chance, see? Because we can do anything we choose to do. And that don't mean financially. People think, oh, we can do anything, but that don't mean you're going to get up and go make $100 million. But that means you get your mind right. You know, not genuine, but I watched the Star Wars picture. I used to start with one of my favorite guys. I asked the guy, I say, for two cigarettes now, you let me see how good you know your movies. I say, what did Yoda say to Obi-Wan Kenobi in the swamps about Luke Skywalker? Well, I don't know. I told him, I said, Yoda said this to so Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now listen to this, this was years ago. I know you think this is just a movie, but this is what Obi-Wan Kenobi, Yoda said to Obi-Wan Kenobi. And you say, how did he remember that? All these years later, he remembered that. Yoda told, told, told Obi-Wan Kenobi in the swap about Luke Skywalker when he was young and wild. He said, the boy cannot learn. He has no discipline. And Yoda asked him, said, was I any different when you taught me? And Yoda got the message, which means the student taught the teacher something. See, Yoda was the master. He had given up because he got up in his old age. He was ready to give up on Luke Skywalker. The boy cannot learn because he has no discipline. But was I any different when you taught me? And Yoda looked up and did not have an answer which means the student that he taught came back and delivered something to the, to the teacher and taught the teacher. Which means anybody can do anything and we'll learn. And that's another thing, we read books, we, read, we look at movies, we don't understand what the intelligence of the movie given us. If you look at Star Wars, the power of the dark side and the Jedi Knight, that was heaven and, and, and hell fighting against each other. That's why they kept saying the power of the dark side. The emperor was Lucifer coming in. Luke Skywalker was the angel that God sent to defeat Lucifer. So when you, everything is about life, even the movies that you see is about life. The bank robbery in the movie Heat, downtown Los Angeles. Robert De Niro and, uh, and, and Al Pacino shooting it out in the middle of Los Angeles streets. Remember that thing a long time ago in North Hollywood where that bank robbery was shooting out in the middle of the streets? You didn't get that message when they killed them two boys out there in North Hollywood? They was robbing that bank, then they come with the movie Heat years later. But it was downtown. That changed the scenario a little bit, but, changed, but it was downtown Los Angeles. And this was a real life active, active thing. But well, most people didn't get that. That was the bank robbery in North High and Burbank. I mean, yeah, in Burbank, uh, about 10, 20 years ago when they killed them two boys and them guys had the machine gun robbing that bank. And a year later came with heat. So my point is this, people. Everything pertains to life. Ain't no need of worrying. Because it'll be all over in the morning. And there's another one. Baby, don't worry. Every little thing going to be all right. One more. Ain't got nowhere to live, cigarette man. Ain't got no money. Ain't got no wife. Ain't got no family. But don't worry. Be happy. That's all we can do. Because we cannot control the things we want to control on this planet. No one man can control that. I know one female, we do the best we can in life, and that's all that we do. And then we move on, and nobody's character is the same. We've had presidents, everybody from all the 60s. Uh, Jesus Christ was the first assassination when they hung him on the cross. Abraham Lincoln freed the blacks. They hated him and shot him in the back of the head. John F. Kennedy and Robert F. Kennedy, two brothers, were very noble, but they died. Malcolm X wanted to, wanted, wanted to stand up for the brothers because they felt like, and some of the things he said was right and some of the things he said was wrong because he felt like we wasn't, wasn't getting a fair hand. They killed him. Martin Luther King wanted to do it a little bit different. He wanted to go for all the people, which is a noble thing. Both men were noble, but, they, but they, he wanted to help the people, period. But they killed him. And can't no one person control the world. And if you try, they'll kill you too. So 
Well, my point is, people, try to live. Try to be happy. You got YouTube, you got Facebook, you got all kinds of things you can do. You got Venice. If you don't want to do nothing else, do you know, I don't know if I told you this in my first interview, but do you know about 25 years ago, I wanted to leave Los Angeles, about 30 years, I wanted to leave Los Angeles so bad. And I didn't have the money, and one night I walked out the door, and I told my buddy, I said, I'm leaving in the morning. He said, well, where are you going? How are you going to leave? I said, I'm going to take that 10-speed huffy, and I'm going to ride that all the way down 10 to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And I did that. The next morning I got up, he, I brought my bike downstairs. It was on St. Julian and 5th Street. And I got on that 10-speed hubby, left a house full of furniture. I was in the SRO. Left a house full of furniture in there, money. And I got on Highway 10, which started over here. They tell me it started in Santa Monica, but I thought it started over here, this on the other side of downtown. But somebody told me now that 10 runs all the way down to Santa Monica, but I didn't start from there. I started from over here, so I thought that's where 10 started at. But uh, I took 10 all the way down to the bottom of Florida. So I got almost to Fort Warden Beach. And I had two flat tires. And the guy put the, put the back, put it, put it back on the back of his truck. And he said, uh, he took me to his, he let me go to his house. And, I was getting, and the front fork was broke. But do you know what this man told me when, I, when he found out where I was coming from? He said, I'll give you $200 for that bike and buy you a ticket to Fort Lauderdale. I say, but the bike is towed up, sir. To buy new forks for that bike, you'd have to buy a whole new bike. You just can't buy new forks for the bike because the bike is fit for the forks. He said, I don't care what that bunch you say about that bike. That bike got a lot of history, and I'll give you $200 and buy you a ticket for that And he did. I never saw him again, but he was a good man, white guy. He was a damn good man. And when I left that night, I mean the next day, he shook my hand. I knew then this would be the one and only time me and this guy would meet. But he fed me and took me in his house and didn't know me from Adam. I could have been a killer coming across that highway. I could have been a, a, a ruthless person. He did not even know. But he opened his house to me and then he went in and laid down in his bed and closed his eyes and had a good night's sleep on a man he had never met in his life, a black man. Not that the color would matter, but I'm just saying I threw that in there because back then there was a lot of animosity between different races, Spanish, blacks, and whites. It was a lot of animosity. And this happened at a time where the animosity and the stress level was great. So this was years ago. So for him to do that to me was a very noble thing because he didn't know me from Adam. And I could have I woke up that night, did anything, set his house on fire, killed him, anything. But I made $200. And I had made a little money all the way down the highway. But my point was, I rode that 10 speed down there. And oh, but by the way, it was two cops that told me, two highway patrols told me I couldn't ride the bike on the highway. But once they found out where I was riding from, do you know these two people gave, these two officers gave me a freight pad? Not at the same time. One in Arizona and one in Florida. And they gave me a free pass. Because, and, I, and it wasn't nobody handing me water, it wasn't no TV thing, wasn't no publicity stuff, I just did it. And so uh, my point is, if, 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 we, if we dig deep inside us, if we dig real deep, there's something deep inside you that's waiting to come out. You got to wake it up. You got to bring it up out of you. It's in there, but if you think it's not and you let people put you down or make you feel worthless, you will never find it. It'd be like Godzilla was sleeping in the side of that mountain. When you wake up, he broke out the side of that mountain. The monster of monsters, defend all public, hero of monsters. And when you wake up, when you wake up, what's inside of you, It'll break out you. Just like Gonzalo broke out the side of that mountain. I asked a dude one time a stupid question. I say, can you tell me would King beat a god? He went to figure and trying to figure out Thor beat Hulk or Zeus beat this. I say, no, it's simple. Don't look for nothing complicated. 
See, we take things simple and make it complicated. And ask him, I say, what king be the God? Quit looking for the complicated thing. Think of something simple in your mind. He said, well, I don't know. I can't figure that out. I say, you never saw the movie King Kong versus Godzilla? He looked at me and laughed. I say, that's because you look, at the, you look for something that's complicated. King Kong versus Godzilla. Would God be the, would King be the God? <coughs> so my point is, when you rush the car to the, to the mechanic, if you look up under that hood, you say, damn, all I had to do was tap that, but some guy charged you $300. To go in and just hit something with a hammer. Bing! It's ready. Or some lady paid a guy $50 to fix her flat tire. When she really couldn't afford that because we're going to put them in. But she worried about a nail. Oh no, my nail. Oh, I can't wear my nail. You put on a pair of goddamn jeans, jack that hammer up, put that thing under the car, jack it up. Forget those little pretty nails and save yourself some money. Roll that town and put it on there. Pay attention to how when, when you take your car to a mechanic shop, look at what that man doing. Don't sit there and say, oh, I got to make an appointment. Okay. Make your appointment. And when the car, when your car breaks down again, bring it back to me so I can get another thousand dollars from you. Don't look at what I'm doing. Don't pay attention to what's happening right here. Oh, I got to have the babysitter taking my kid. I can't go. I'm going to Europe. Bam. Okay, you do that. Oh, where are you in Europe? Oh, I can't come home now because I'm on my way to Russia now for the big meeting. Oh, I can't do that because now I got a meeting in Spain and then I'll be in New York next week. And all this time, your child is around that babysitter. It's feeding her, loving her, nurturing her, getting to know her. And then you wonder, why do my child go to you like that? Why do my child love you like that? Because that's what she know. You just the motherfucker that brought her in the world. That's the one that's been loving her. The child going to where you love her, to the ones who've been loving her. You was in Spain, Russia, Rome, New York, all year long gone. You just another woman to that child, just like the dog. You feed a stray dog food, or a stray cat, they will come back to you every time. So the things you're going to love is the things that you know. The things you come up around. The people who's been good to you. So remember to the mother that's got the babysitter out there. When you look at your daughter, your son, and say, why he act so cold to me, sir? When have you ever been around him? Do he even know you? Did he grow up with you? Was you always in Russia, Rome, and all that, gone for two or three years at a time, or four or five months out of the year? And then when you came back, you was only at home for a week before you had to get up and go again? And you think if you gave him a few kisses and say, I love you, and took him to the store and bought him a new pair of joints or a new bicycle, that that made that right? Love comes from the inside, baby. And remember, love is all the things you hate. God damn it, I hate I got to stay here with my cow. I can't go make that meat. God damn it, I hate I can't go, I can't go over here because I got to do this. Now you love it because you're doing the right thing and you're doing what you got to do, not what you want to do. See, anybody can do what they want to do. Well, can you do what you got to do when the time comes, what you know you got and need to do? Because if we just did what we want to do, that would be easy. Hey, I can just do what I want. I'm going to walk down the street, smoke wax. Don't have to worry about nothing. Or I can just jump in my car and go, that ain't nothing. What comes home when I got to love my child? I nurture my grandmother who have took care of I'm not my mother who have taken ill and can't get out of bed. I want to tell my brothers, oh, I'll tell you take care of mama today. It ain't my day, y'all. It ain't my mama day to take care of mama. Yeah, I stayed home with her all day yesterday. I stayed home with dad all day yesterday. It hurts you that bad to stay home and take care of your parents. Your son got old, it's in a wheelchair, can't get out of bed. And then you ask yourself, how bad did it hurt them when they sent you to 
school for all those years and paid your college education and fed you, paid your rent, bought your clothes. Well, they'd act like that towards you, but you want to put them in a convalescent home. Get rid of them. Give somebody else the responsibility that you know you should have. Because it's, I'm too busy, I gotta work, I gotta do this. You gotta do everything. But take care of the people that you love and take care of your life. Everything is important to you. But that life that you carried for nine months and went through all that pain that brought her in the world, or him in the world. And now you don't even have time. If you notice, when we have little puppies, we love little sweet puppies and kids. Oh, they so playful, they love, we love them, they so cute. Even baby, they so cute. And when you get grown, the dog sits in the corner. Nobody pets it no more. The cat just lay around lazy and that's a grown cat. Get up, meow, walk across the floor, eat. Kid, sit there, talk to your son. Oh, you just a nothing ass loser. I don't love you no more. Get out of my house. Oh, bitch, you ain't shit since you growed up. You just an old slutty ass whore. But way back when, oh, she was so cute and so pretty and so nice. Because then you didn't have too much responsibility. All you do is go in there and change your diaper and carry a milk bottle. But now that you got to put a little work into it, I don't love you no more now. It's too hard. You're making me think too hard. You're making me work too hard to love you. Ain't that what love is supposed to be about? Ain't that what love is? Or is love some little bitty baby that can't tell you, Mama, I hate that. You ever see the baby crying? Yeah. You wonder why she won't stop crying? That's our way of looking at what you and say, I'll fuck you. I can't talk yet. I'm crying because you's a stinking son of a bitch to treat me like this, neglect me with your boyfriend in the living room. I'm in here hungry and need my milk bottle. That's the baby's way of saying, I need some god doggone attention. You ain't giving me enough. I'm your child. But you want to play like she can't understand that. And you know what the baby means. You intelligent enough to know that baby crying and needs some attention, needs something. But you're too lazy. She cry all night. Well, what you think a baby gonna do? Why you tell that man to put on a condom? if you didn't really want this. Your decision is bringing the work. You let him bust in you, and if it's your husband, then you suppose you, that's the way it's supposed to be. But if it's some boyfriend or some little dude out there, you did that. Being unresponsible. Letting him bust all up inside you like, now you got the baby, you don't want to play. And the same thing with the dad. Oh, nigga, this get too hard. I'm gonna run. I don't, I got to divorce you. I can't take care of all them kids. But you couldn't worry about that when you was putting your thing up in there, busting all up in the woman. But now you want to leave your children at home and go out and cheat on your wife with another woman or use your drugs to leave, to, to leave reality. You take a flight, as they say, get drunk to elude the responsibilities you have. The problem with that is, is when you take that flight and go up, whatever goes up must come down. That problem's still there. When you come off that alcohol bin, that problem is still there. When you put that crystal down or that crack down that took you from reality, that problem is still there. How do you get away? You don't. You face it. You take care of your children. You love your wife or respect your wife even if you don't love her no more and y'all divorce. You help that woman take care of them kids. You help that man take care of them kids. And remember, if you want that big old house, you can have that. If you want that bed, that house with the five bedrooms and three bathrooms, a big backyard, you can have that. But when it comes time to pay for that, the mortgage, the water bill, the light bill, the property tax, don't get angry because this is what you wanted. Blame yourself for that. But I can't afford that. And I'm not going to get angry at somebody else that can because we got different lives. They life took that turn, mine didn't. But it's not for me to get mad and get jealous because I can't have that. 
When I, in the bottom line, I didn't want it no way. I probably could have had it. But the reason I felt like I couldn't have it because I could not meet the responsibility of taking care of this thing and taking care of it like a woman. Upkeep, gas, insurance, responsibility, driver's license. Now, if you can handle that, that's fine. But if you can't handle that, and you're trying to try live on, on life, live above your means, or you're trying to live a life that somebody else said you could, you could do, remember, you didn't do it because you wanted to. You did it because somebody else suggested that you could do this and it would be easy. I know I'm going to end it up pretty good. But, and, I, and I have to come this thing to a, cut this thing off. And I got a few more things to say, but I'm going to cut this down pretty much because there's other people, other things this guy have to do today. But uh, maybe not in the next month or so, but in the next month or two, you'll probably hear from me again. But remember, people, everything we do in life, if a man, and a man, male or female, didn't have a gun to your head, it was your decision. Get mad at yourself. Because you had two answers to say. You could have said yes or no. Those are your options. And if you want that big old car, get that. If you can feel like you can have that. If you want that big mansion in Bel Air, Beverly Hills, or even you just want the five or six bedroom in Santa Monica and everything there, you can have that. Some of y'all just want to go on that exotic cruise vacation. Just take a cruise. That costs you about a half a year's salary too. So if you pay go on that cruise, <laughs> We have enough money to feed the kid next week. We have enough money to make the car payment. You take four, five thousand, ten thousand dollars going on a cruise, and with all the extras, lay on the back, smuggle, sip on margaritas, living high on that ocean. And then as soon as you touch land, you got bill collectors lined up from here all the way to New York. Oh, you went on that cruise. We finna repossess this. Oh, we finna repossess that. Live your life. Don't try to live the life of others. It'll never work. There's no right or wrong. Everybody has different characters, different personalities. We all think differently. And even on this interview, there'll be some that like it. And there'll be a lot of some that say, fuck that, he wrong. I don't agree with that. And that is the human way. That is the nature of life. We cannot blame everybody else for decisions we make in life. And one other thing I got to say, remember this. Every decision you make in your life, you will help be held accountable for that. Whether it's today or next year. But somewhere, something you said yes to or no to will come back to bite you. You think, damn it. God, if I'd have said no that last week. Now I got to pay to this damn bill over here. All because I let this idiot talk me and spend that money last week. Your decision, you said yes or no to that. And you did not think it properly. And if you had something to do a week later, for that moment it left your mind and you didn't think about it. Not until you got in a hole that you could not dig your way out of. And then you wanted to point the finger at the world. No, sir. It's not anybody's fault in the world that Cigarette Man don't have any brothers and sisters. It's not anybody's fault that Cigarette Man doesn't have a car. My fault. It's not anybody else's fault that I don't have no wife and kids. It's not anybody's fault that my mother died at 12. When I was 12 years old. That's not nobody's fault. Not even mine. That's just what happened in that time, at that point in her life. So if I was left here by myself, she didn't intentionally do it, and it was no one else's fault. And if there is a God in heaven, which I do believe, but everybody don't believe the same way I believe, so I don't push religion on you. But if there's one up there, then that was his decision to do that. And we don't question him. And we all believe in something. So you don't have to believe in what I believe. Just get an understanding of your own life and believe what you believe. 
Because in the end, whether he's whether it is one of them, they remember, it said in that book you picked a long time picked up a long time ago, he is your only judge. No one else. And people gonna make you feel guilty in life so they can control you. So they gonna try to make you feel guilty like on everything they do. Make you feel like you owe them. Make you feel like you're doing something. That they've they, they, they done so much for you that you owe them your life. You owe them everything. And you owe no one nothing. Because if there is a God in heaven, if they, he hadn't gave them life, they wouldn't have been able to give you what they gave you. So everything you got, from my belief, you got it from God. That's my belief. That doesn't have to be your belief, whatever you believe in. But that's where you got it from. Because if I didn't wake up today, I couldn't do this interview. So whatever I'm giving you, do this interview, which I hope you, you will find some things in it that will help your life better and make it easier. And for the ones that don't, I'm sorry, I did the best I could do. But the only thing I'm giving you is me. And I'm really not giving you that. Because if he hadn't woke me up today, this interview would have never took place. And you would have never heard from me again. Have a good day, people. Maybe we'll talk again in about a month or two. We'll see you. And I hope, we'll, hope what you heard today will help a lot of you people's lives out out there and make it better. And don't blame anybody for the things you say yes and no to. Goodbye. Oh, one other thing. What was the guy's name? Uh, Anonymous Anonymous. Okay. And to Mr. Anonymous. Thank you, and I hope you find some things in this that you like, and I hope you find this interview is more is, is just as good as the others. And um, maybe in a month or two, when I when I walk around and see some things I need to talk about, I'll be back again if God's will if I'm alive. Until then, Mr. Anonymous and all the rest of society in the world out there, enjoy your life and have a good day. Cigarette man out.